There's this really quick way of graphing a line. Um, in the earlier lessons, we were graphing using a table of values, but that's not really the quickest way to do it. It's not the most efficient. It's the way that you graph a line or you graph any function or any graph if you don't know what it's supposed to look like. You pick a couple numbers and you plug it in. But when you want to graph a line, you can use these things called intercepts. And the x-intercept of a line is the x-coordinate of a point where the line crosses the x-axis. It occurs when y equals 0. So let's look at this picture. The x-intercept is right here. The y value is 0, and it's hitting at the x-axis at this point, something comma 0. And on the flip side, the y-intercept of a line is the y-coordinate of a point where the line crosses the y-axis. It occurs when x equals 0. So if you look over at this intercept, the x value is 0, and it's called the y-intercept because it's intercepting the y-axis. They're called that for a reason. The y-intercept hits the y-axis. The x-intercept hits the x-axis. The technique that I was telling you about a minute ago that's a quick way of graphing a line is this thing called slope-intercept form. And slope-intercept form is written as y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, which we've done earlier to earlier this chapter, and b represents the y-intercept. So in this equation right here, you have y equals mx plus b. x and y are just letters. You never change them unless you have to plug something in, which we'll see later. Um, but m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So let's look at some examples. Let's find the slope and y-intercept of these equations. So I need to know the m and the b. So what number is in the m spot? So if you look at the formula, y equals mx plus b, the m is always in front of the x. It's always, always, always the number that's right next to the x. So the number that's right next to the x or right in front of the x is negative 4. So I'll say that the slope is negative 4. And if you want to, you could write that as negative 4 over 1 because we know slope is written as a fraction, but you don't have to. And then the b is the other number. So the, the b, which is the y-intercept, is the point 0, comma, negative 2, because it's right here, negative 2. When you look at letter B, it has to be in this Y equals form. The Y has to be by itself. When you go over, over to letter B, you see the Y is kind of not really by itself. It has that minus 5 on it. So let's drop a line, just like we did last chapter, and let's add 5 to both sides. Hopefully, you are not going to combine these because you can't combine a number and a letter. And that's the function that you get. That's the equation. So now I can do the m and the b. So the number in the slope spot is the number 3 halves, 3 over 2. And the number that's in the b spot is 0, 5. If you didn't move that 5 over, you would have probably written negative 5 but it really is positive 5, so you always have to get the y by itself. So now let's see how this works when we graph. So I'm going to make a xy grid, and here's how you plot a, a line just using slope and intercept. I'm not going to make a table. So first thing you do is you plot the y-intercept. Well, first we have to figure out what the m and the b are. So m is negative 3, and I'll write that as negative 3 over 1, and the y-intercept is 0, 3. First thing you do is you plot 0, 3. Then from 0, 3, you use a slope. This says down 3, and then write 1. That's what the slope tells me to do. So from this point, not the origin, from this point, go down 3, write 1, and then put a dot. 
Do it again. Go down three, right one. Down three, right one. You could also do it reverse and go up three, left one, and land right here at this point. You can go up three, left one, because it, you'll see, you see it's on the same line. So now let's connect it, make a line, label it. And this technique is when you get good at it, you can graph a line in like under 45 seconds. The last thing we have to do is say what the x-intercept is. The x-intercept is right here at 1, 0. Last one together. The cost y of taking a taxi x miles is y equals 2.5x plus 2. Well, in order to do letter A, which is to graph it, we have to know what the M and the B are. Well, the y-intercept is actually quicker to find. It's 0, 2. The slope, the number that's in the slope spot, is the number 2.5. But I told you that slope can't ever be written as a decimal. You have to write it like a fraction. So, question is, how do you write 2.5 as a fraction? Well, first I'll turn this into the number 2 and 1 half, because that's what 2.5 is. Then I'll turn it into the number 5 over 2. Now my slope is a fraction, so I know that this means up 5, right 2. And I just abbreviated U and R. So now let's go to graph it. Now if Y represents dollars and X represents miles, it doesn't make sense for me to be in the negatives. So again, you want to think about what you're graphing before you just randomly make a grid. So I'll have to graph the point 0, 2, which is right here. And then from this point, go up 5 and write 2 and then put a dot. Do it again. Up 5, write 2. The more points you have, the more accurate your line is going to be. So connect your points and label your line. Okay. Letter B. Interpret the y-intercept and slope. So what does 0, 2 mean? That's what they want to find out. 0, 2 means what? So you go to your labels. 0 was representing miles, and 2 was representing dollars. So 0 miles means you haven't moved at all. So 0, 2 means when you start, you have to pay $5. I'm sorry, $2. And if you've ever gone to the city and been in a taxi before, what you see on the side door is it says that there's a, a fee to just get in the taxi. Um, before you start moving, they, they charge you just to sit in the taxi. So for this one, you would have to pay $2 just to get in. And then you'd pay more for each mile that you go. Speaking of that, they want to know what the slope is. Well, the slope is 2.5 or 5 over 2. So 5 over 2, remember 5 was representing our y value and 2 represented our x value. So that means 5 is y, so that represented dollars, and 2 is x, so that represented miles. So that means you pay $5 every 2 miles. So if you wanted to reduce 5 over 2, that's 2.5 like it was originally. So you could say you pay $2.50 for every mile. You could also say that that would be correct as well. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.